Okay. This Ouroboros, how does this connect to the Garden of Eden and the dating that we're talking about? Well, it's very simple. If we can prove that the Ouroboros is the riddle that Samson was offering for the eater that eateth of himself, and then understand that symbolism between this golden age scenario of the new age and then this golden honey and these bees that came forth out of this lion that he rendered and then time all of that up with what's happening now with of course the coming strong delusion and the great falling away being timed with the locust with this false doctrine which the false doctrine is the rendering of the lion okay and that lion is that that roaring faith in Jesus Christ at least in this pure symbolism concerned with the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah now think about this friends if we can time up the Ouroboros to that riddle then I can use that same calendar system to go back in time and time this up to the start of the Garden of Eden using the very same 70 generation code that we saw in the beginning of Genesis now that's the theory that we're going to use the information that we have to find the information that we don't I don't know if anybody's ever watched the puzzle piece theory on my channel it's a very old video but that's exactly what this is all about so let's figure out what the Ouroboros is you already know that it's a symbol as the snake who is eating himself let's check out just the basic definition then we'll read the different cultural interpretation Ouroboros represents the perpetual cyclic renewal of life and infinity the concept of eternity and the eternal return and represents the cycle of life death and rebirth leading to immortality as in the phoenix now that's exactly what we have with our world age scenario and that's what exactly what we have with the placement of the serpent and then you saw at the ending of the kingdom age he was loosed again I want you to see once again we see the same thing life death rebirth think about this he comes for the judgment then he's bound for the thousand years then he's released again it's all the same scenario think about this my friends now let's look at what the culture of ancient Egypt has and offers for their understanding in the Egyptian book of the dead the self begetting sun god Atum is said to have ascended from chaos waters with the appearance of a snake the animal of renewing itself every morning and the deceased wishes and the deceased wishes to turn into the shape of the snake Sato son of the earth the embodiment of a tomb meaning that the deceased meaning that person who had died was hoping to turn into the incarnation of this snake, Sato. Okay, sorry for the way that I read that. So we see that the Egyptian cultural, ancient cultural reference is going to be with a serpent coming from these waters. And of course we have the bottomless pit, which is the abyss, which is going to connect us back to the Apsu, which is who Inki, Lord of the Earth or Lord of the Flowing Waters, is in Sumerian terms, which is going to connect us directly back to the sons of God of Genesis 6 and the Anunnaki as the same identities, but just simply hid from you. Now here is the connection from Greece. Plato described a self-eating circular being as the first living thing in the universe. Now hold on here. Let's think about that again. We have Plato described a self-eating circular being as the first living thing in the universe. Well, there we have it. There is the Ouroboros. Now, snake, snake, snake. Gnosticism. This serpent symbolized eternity in the soul of the world. 